Great. Thanks, Megan. I appreciate it. Hey, welcome, everybody, today uh, to today's webinar entitled LIMS, ELN, and LES, um, what their uses and functionality are, how they overlap in functionality, as well as the benefits. We will leave the upgrades to some other time. That was just a mis uh, misnomer from uh, Megan. It really is about the benefits of the different systems, not the upgrading the different systems. My apologies. So, <laughs> thank you. So um, that's what you're here to see. So hopefully that is uh, what you are looking to talk about. So we'll go on and uh, get into the webinar. So before we get too far down the line, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a feeling of who's presenting to you today. My name is Howard Rosenberg. I am a uh, principal industry, industry consultant here at CSOLS. Uh, here's my lovely face up here on the right-hand side. I've been involved in the informatics industry and uh, been sort of an expert in this field for I guess well over 20, 25 years now, uh, and I have expertise in a variety of the different systems and most of these we'll be talking about today, lab information management systems, electronic lab notebooks, chromatography data systems, scientific data management systems, and the like. I've also had the privilege and uh, capability to work in a variety of different industry spaces, including the ones listed here, environmental, chemical, pharma, biotech, and uh, over my career I have uh, visited so many different labs, so many different kinds of labs, um, that I've uh, developed a pretty extensive knowledge of most of the laboratory processes for different types of environments and also workflows that go on inside these labs. Although you're always going to run into something new because people do things new all the time, um, but I do have a lot of background in that, as well as I've picked up uh, a very deep knowledge of IT, uh, networks, systems, uh, databases, uh, all kinds of things like that, so you can feel free to talk about that. And back in the dark ages, I actually have a doctorate in chemistry, analytical chemistry, uh, so I do understand the science, at least on the chemistry side of things, not, not so much on the biology side of things, quite honestly, although I have picked up quite a lot along the way. So this gives you an idea of who I am and my background, so if you have questions, you can feel free to go into any of these type of areas, and we'll go from there. So today, as you know, we were talking about uh, basically the differences and similarities and overlaps and benefits of LIMS, ELN, and LES systems. Um, but the agenda today, we'll first look at sort of lab informatics on an overview type of view. Then we'll get into each of the different uh, products we're gonna talk about today and where they're primarily used, how they're used, what their functionality is, and what the benefits of those particular systems for those environments that tend to use those systems really work. Then we're going to spend some time talking about how these applications or the functionality within the applications are sort of converging and overlapping among each other and what that means for our industry. We'll go through some frequently asked questions because people usually are trying to determine which of these systems they're supposed to get or should get or which combination and you run into a lot of typical questions. We'll go through those and we'll give you some advice and some help on how you go about selecting your system. And then we'll have leave time left over, usually 10, 15 minutes or so, for questions and answers. So um, I hope this is all uh, good for you. Um, before I move on to the next slide, I'm going to make use of my uh, hand raising capability here. I'm going to ask you all a question. I would like to know of the members of the audience, please raise your hand if you have more than one of these three products, you know, meaning you have a LIMS and an ELN or a LIMS and an LES or so on and so forth. So if you have more than one of these installed and running in your organization, raise your hand. So just to reiterate, more than more than one. more than one. So not just a LIMS, not just an ELN. You have a LIMS and an ELN, a LIMS and an LES, or an ELN and an, and an LES, or something like that. I was curious who has combination systems running or more than one system running. Okay. So um, looking at the raised hands. Uh, right now, it's actually a very small percentage, only a couple. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so it sounds like, you, you, well, let me ask the second question. How many of you have none of these? <laughs> so you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to get. All right, well, let me put down the hands. Uh, put down your hands first. Put down the hands. Okay, now, now go ahead and answer. Okay, so now answer again. How many of you have none of these and you're just trying to figure it out? Okay, uh, a couple hands went up for that one. Okay, so it sounds like some people, most people have one system or another. All right, just kind of curious. It helps me understand where you're all at so I can understand what to emphasize during the webinar. Okay, so as we like to call it the alphabet soup in the world of laboratory informatics, um, they have a variety of different acronyms here, laboratory information management systems, LIMS, electronic lab notebooks, ELNs, and laboratory execution systems, and we'll go explain what each of these do and 
what they're used for. But I want to let you know also there's some other systems that you know are considered part of this, this soup in this area. Um, you'll often find laboratory information management systems also denoted as either LMS systems or LIS systems. Now traditionally LIS systems have been placed in diagnostic or clinical type of environments. So you'll probably see most often LIS systems or LIST systems are associated with those type of environments, hospitals and the like, whereas LIMS is more inside of a, a laboratory, either a research or quality assurance, quality control type of laboratory or academia type of laboratory. What the difference is though now is these things are starting to squeeze together. You'll notice in the industry that the LIMS companies are starting to do more things in the diagnostic area and the people in the diagnostic areas, probably the hospital systems aren't moving in, encroaching into laboratories, but for sure the laboratories and, or, the, or the vendors who produce limb systems are moving further into that sort of clinical forensic type of, I shouldn't say forensic, clinical type of and diagnostic type of environment. So the line between a limbs and an LIS, to a certain degree, depending upon the type of laboratory, is kind of blurring a little bit. More so, it's about you know the, the types of samples. So some of the samples that you're finding in an LIS will also now end up inside of a, let's say, a, a biorepository system or some other limb, limb system. So that sort of is flowing together a little bit. Traditionally, also, there's a couple other systems that are often thought of inside of this, scientific data management systems, which are systems to store and archive both raw results and finished results in a non-changing type of environment and format. And these were designed and originally put in place for uh, particular reasons uh, back in the time frame that they were introduced, mainly around uh, Part 11 compliance and long-term retention of documentation and, and information. And then chromatography data systems have been around for a long, long time. As you know, chromatography has been one of the most popular and continues to be one of the most popular analytical type of um, tests in the world or analyses in the world. So it, it's chromatography data systems have been around for a tremendously long time. So those are also part of the soup. So to